This is Ali Mugabel, and you're watching Probabilistic Methods for Engineers. Today, we discuss the very, very important topic, which is the Gaussian or normal, normal random variable. We hear about this so frequently, the Gaussian random variable. So we'll see why it is that important, what is it, the definition, and we'll look at the commutative distribution function and the normalized one, and we'll conclude with the Q approximation for the, uh, for the CDF. Now, let's get started with a very important topic, which is the Gaussian normal random variable. Gaussian or normal random variable. Why Gaussian random variables are very important? What you see in the sketch here on the side is basically the distribution of the Gaussian random variable. This is the PDF. The x-axis represents the variable that we are trying to measure, and the y-axis is the density of the probability how the probability is distributed. As you can see, it is uh, important and we'll see why. So let's take it one step at a time. The Gaussian density function is the most important of all densities. But why? First, it's the most important. Or let's say it is almost the most important. And then why? Because it accurately describes many practical and significant real world problems. Imagine that you want to see how the weight of students in a certain university or in a country uh, distributed. So you expect that in a certain university there will be a certain concentration of weights, that's the mean, okay, and you expect that most of the students are going to be around that weight, so we have the highest possible density, and then there are a few more students above, few less. As you go away from this mean, the density decreases, decreases. And this is something that's normal, and this is why you call it the Gaussian or normal distribution. Normal distribution. If you look at the weights, if you look at the heights, so it accurately describes many practical and significant real-world quantities, such as noise, voltage, current, electrons, weights, heights, temperature, so which are uh, results from many small independent random events. Okay. Many of the phenomena in our life are made of small, independent, random events. Like looking at the weights from different students, looking at their height, looking at their GBA. Usually there is a certain concentration, and then we have uh, less students as we go away from the mean. It's usually symmetric, and um, it, it really represents many of our li life quantities. All we need to do is just change the average. For example, if you're using Fahrenheit, or uh, degree Celsius, then you have to change the mean because uh, the mean is going to change, the temperature is going to be different, and also the, the width or the distribution is going to change. So two main factors to change on the Gaussian random variable. So again, why it's important? Because it represents many um, real life quantities. The second important point, and we're going to emphasize this later on, under very general condition, the limiting distribution of the average of any other independent identically distributed random variables is going to be random or normal. Maybe this is not very clear now, but it will be clear as we go to the central limit theorem. That's to say, even if you start with non-Gaussian, non-normal, uh, and then you add a lot of distributions, you'll find that the sum, the sum of these quantities is always going to be random. So it's going to be uh, random and it's going to be Gaussian and normal. So this is maybe a little clear and this one will come cl will become clearer as we go to the central limit theorem. Now that we have seen the importance of the Gaussian or normal normal random variable, it's time to see how it is defined. When do we call it Gaussian? We'll start with the math and then we'll make some more um, sense. A random variable x is called Gaussian random variable if its density function has the following form. So this is defi this definition is based on the PDF or the density function. Here is a mathematical expression and we'll see how it works. And now um, we have x which represent the phenomena. x is the weight or the height or whatever you are measuring, voltage or current. And now we have the following expression. There are two unknowns here, ax which represent the mean, the center of the distribution, and sigma x is related to the standard deviation, is related to the variance, the width. 
will be formally explained later on. But it controls the width of the distribution. So there are two quantities. Sigma x is always a positive quantity. Sigma x squared is always a positive quantity. The mean, of course, is any number between minus infinity and plus infinity. This could be anywhere. We can, we can shift the distribution to the right or to the left. So we have these two quantities to control the distribution. The spread about this mean is related to sigma x. Now, to see how the spread is related, let's calculate the quantity, the PDF, at three different quantities. What is the value of the PDF at x equal to x, x equal to x minus sigma x, and finally x equal to x plus sigma x? These are the three points. I want to know what's the value at x and these two other points. Clearly, if you substitute x for ax here, they are going to cancel. The exponent is going to be 0. e to the power minus 0 is 1. What remains is the maximum possible value, which is 1 over 2 by sigma x squared. So always the peak equal to this coefficient. Now, what is the value at x equal to ax plus sigma x? Or my, What if we move from the mean one standard deviation right or left? Sigma x right or sigma x left? Uh, we'll, as I said, we'll define uh, standard deviation variance later on. For now, it's just a matter of spread. To calculate the, the, the location, then we just need to uh, substitute for x here, and the quantity will be the following. I will just remove the red part here, which is x, and put ax minus sigma x. You can see that uh, x with minus ax will cancel out. What remains is sigma squared and now sigma x squared with sigma x in the denominator will cancel and what remains is e to the power minus half which is nothing but 0.607 so this is the value of the distribution one standard deviation away so as we increase the value of sigma you expect the magnitude to drop more and we have uh, we can control the spread of the distribution so those values are there irrespective of the value of sigma I mean, irrespective of the value of A. Before we move from the definition, I just want to uh, highlight the notation issue. Usually, x is noted this way, tilde n, which means that the random variable x is distributed according to normal distribution. Between brackets, the first number is the mean, and the second one is the variance, or the square of sigma. If we use n01, this is called the standard normal. So we have normal distribution, we have the standard normal. Standard normal means uh, the variance, uh, sorry, the mean is zero and sigma squared is equal to one. And at times we call it unit normal distribution or standard normal distribution. There could be some differences in the notations, but this is what we are going to stick with. We have Gaussian and normal are the same. Standard normal or unit normal distribution it's Gaussian and uh, normal distribution when the, when the mean equal to zero and the variance or the standard or sigma squared equal to one. So this is how we define the Gaussian normal distribution. Now let's dive more into the expression to understand uh, how it works. Because at many times students ask me whether they sh they're supposed to memorize this expression or not. Okay, let's make it, um, uh, let's make it reasonable. Let's try to find out how to recall this expression. To start with, usually we say that um, phenomena are usually concentrated around a certain value and then they decay. Uh, like this curve, approximately the orange curve, if you sketch it, you're basically sketching the following expression, e to the power minus x. e to the power minus x, x is damping exponential. e to the power minus x squared is something similar to this, except that the peak when x equal to zero, you get one. So it's, it's supposed to be e to the power minus x squared, something that you have to remember. But now to get control on the mean, to shift to the right or to the left, you need to control x. So this expression now becomes uh, ax is, is what we control. So now becomes e to the power minus x. No, if you want to shift the variable, the independent variable x, then it becomes controllable. I can shift this to the right and to the left. So we went from e to the power minus x to e to the power minus x minus the mean all squared. Okay, so now we can go right, left, like you can see here in the th three curves. But now also you need to have a control over the, uh, over the width, over the spread, what you see here. 
So basically the expression x has to be scaled by sigma. The way we do it is we divide by 2 sigma x square or square root of 2 sigma inside the bracket and then you take the square. So a controls the shift, sigma is a scaling factor of x. So where, this, where does this thing come from? Remember we said that the area under the BDF has to be 1. So if you integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity this expression dx, what are you going to get? You get square root of 2 by sigma x squared, sigma x squared. And this is why we need to multiply by 1 over 2 by to make the area equal to 1. So once more, the integration of this will give you the root, and we are scaling by 1 over 2 to respect the condition for a valid PDF. So now I think, uh, yes, you will need to remember this, but I think it all makes a lot of sense. Before we proceed, I just want to show that this expression the orange one is what we call the standard normal or the unit normal distribution because you can see here that uh, the mean is equal to zero this one will have uh, less variance so you can see that this blue one is mean equal to zero but the variance is 0.2 and the orange one is what we call the standard normal or the unit normal distribution okay now it's time to go into the cumulative distribution function of the CDF of the Gaussian. 